Pararam, parabá. Pararam, parabá. Pararam, parabá. Da, 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 da. What up, everybody? <laughs> it's your boy, Adam Pakora here. And welcome back, or for the first time, to a hard hitting edition of Requiem for a Tuesday. Hi. Gotta say, pretty amped. What a weekend it was. But first, I'm gonna plug, plug, plug. Rate, review, subscribe to Requiem for a Tuesday. Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, wherever you, wherever you're tuning in from. Give us a little tappy tap. You know, do do your thing. Thanks a lot. Uh, check out the merch, rfat.bigcartel.com. Listen to Microwave Minutes, Justice's Food Show, some video, some audio, a little of both, best of both worlds, get what you like, you know, and uh, check out the music, Multiplex and Wolf X, we got lots of good stuff, everything is linked in the description below, as always, uh, here we go! It's showtime. We're pretty much doing a full Sports Corner Edition episode today. Not much else going on. Uh, if there is, I'm not aware of it. Totally tuned out. All I got is fucking brown leather and laces ear to ear. Okay? There's nothing else in this brain but football, football, football. Okay? Uh, before I get into the title games and my various successes and winnings due to these title games, part of the reason why I'm riding so high right now, more than just good ball, talk a little Chicago Bears, your very own Chicago Bears if you're a fellow Chicagoan, and if you're not, too bad. We love them. And... Uh, you know, if you're if you're not a Bears fan, what you don't know probably is the state of dysfunction. See, we we're one of those classic family-owned NFL families without the classic. You know, the Rooneys and the Maras, their fabled stories of how to excel and blah 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 blah. And we're just a shit show. This family has no idea how to run a team. They put most decisions, on um, apparently until now, in the hands of their business manager. And now they're just like, you got to get the fuck out of here. Everybody's been up in arms for years. Everything has been a complete disaster ever since the double doink. One of the most harrowing sounds I've ever heard. In person, I'll never forget it. The energy in the stadium. Thrilled as can be. They make the drive. We're all amped. We're like, holy shit. Are they going to win this goddamn game? As they should have. They were the home team. And, uh, you know, the crowd gets quiet for the kick anyway. So it's dead silent. But it's like a silent with you feel it. You feel an anticipation. Everybody's ready to explode. And instead, the air just gets sucked out of everything. And it was the quietest you'll ever hear 60 plus thousand people be in one place. And I didn't stop screaming probably until I got home. So what a nightmare that was. Anyway, ever since then, it has been a downhill mess but maybe not now and who knows that's the thing it always seems like we made the right hire oh we got the offensive guy from the chiefs sounds perfect not quite oh we got the we got the saints guy guy who put together the super bowl team i don't even know if that timeline's right i don't think he had anything to do with the super bowl team but regardless oh we got the saints guy the saints rip no you just can't have anything good. 
So now what do we think? I don't know. It seems like they're trying to make the right choice this time. Seems like they're really trying their best to really not fuck this up. Seems like they're aware, at least, of the stakes of their current situation and the way the entire fan base feels about everything that's been going on for the past couple years and the state of the team as it is right now and how, like, this is just unacceptable. You know, we went through the John Fox years to get to the Nagy team, and then it fell apart, and that was it. We can't just be sliding down, you know, going fucking 6-10 and 10 every year, or 6-11, and 11, excuse me. It's just not right. So are these guys the right guys? I don't know. It's they're, all, they're saying all the right things, you know, which sounds great, you know, and then what do we do? We pull from the Chiefs, we get the Colts defensive coach. It's like... I get it. It's not like the last offensive coach was like doing great or anything. But I would have liked Brian Dable. You know, but who knows if he's the right answer? I, I There's no way to tell. So we just got to write it out, see what happens. All I know is if in the draft or in free agency, if they don't put an offensive line together, then the season's already, you know... What's the point? It's there, there's nothing we can do without any blocking. You know, we need to be one of those teams that was like, oh, well, this team, we need to be like the Browns. We need to have the same turnaround as the Browns, where it's like, oh, every year they're awful. But it's like, oh, all of a sudden they just have the one of the top five lines in the league. The Bears need to have one of the top five lines in the league. Because if they do and Justin Fields still isn't it, then that's how we know. But there's no way to know if this guy's going to be getting his ass fucking kicked every goddamn day. So, I, you know, I, I want to be excited, but th- there just hasn't been anything to be excited for. It's like change was necessary. So it's not like, oh, I'm thrilled that like something new is happening. It, something new needed to happen. It's just, is this going to be any good? I, I don't know. So that's kind of where I'm at on all that. They hire, they're hire, they hiring guys like crazy. I mean, they brought in an assistant GM for the first time ever, so that's a good sign. Like, more people working is a good sign for me anyway. Uh, they hired, an, are, they're already hiring defensive coordinator. Their offensive guy, though, is just some guy from the Packers. It's like, I don't, I never know how to gauge anything like that uh, because here's the thing I realized, too, on a sidebar, like, Nagy clearly wasn't the guy. Maybe that's why people don't want the enemy. It's like, how much could this guy really matter? Look at the players on the field and look at Andy Reid being the coach. It's like, is it really Eric the enemy the answer? So I could see why there's reservations on that guy now. Because I wouldn't want him after Nagy. You know, he's obviously better, I would say. <laughs> I don't think that we would even need to ever have him coach to think that. But just a sidebar. Um, what I was going to say is... Just in that same realm, like we hire the Packers guy, but it's like they have Rodgers and Adams and, you know, the coach is an offensive guy. So it's like, I don't know what this guy could have done. Like they claim he helped out a lot, but it's like when you're working with stuff like that, maybe your skill sets shine more. I don't really know. But all I'm saying is, you know, not a slam dunk. And some of the critiques I've heard were like, oh, well, now, like, you want the offensive guy to be your coach because if the offense is going off, someone's going to hire your coordinator. It's like, what planet do you think the Chicago Bears play on where we should be concerned about the coordinator being poached because the offense is so good? Like, whoa, 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 pump the brakes. If we get to the point where the offense is so good that people are want to hire our offensive coordinator as their head coach, so be it. I would love to be in that place. That means that everything went perfectly. So if that's the concern for that, then shut the fuck up. Um, but, I mean, I, th- I just think it would be nicer to have a head coach whose focus is on the offense because it, we need it. We need it. Because, like, what, now are they going to go out and spend a bunch of money to bolster the defense? Like, it's not the priority. Let the defense suck for once. I I really don't care anymore. I just would like something positive to happen on the other side of the ball one goddamn year. 
because this is just absurd. So that's the Bears update. We're moving on to the big time, ladies and germs. A place where the Bears probably will not be returning anytime soon. The championship games. What a couple of doozies. Uh, (laughs) Cleaned up big. Had uh, my only preseason future that was still alive. Other than year-end awards, which aren't I'm not going to get anyway. Uh, Rams winning the NFC, so that hit big. Basically, I'm even on the year now. I, I've been saying I was even on the year, but I didn't really count my futures because I did throw in a pretty hefty sum. So now that that's kind of straightened out, we're basically even on the year total, which is great. I uh, had the Bengals as well so just thrilled about all that also just wanted the Bengals to win they're just a much more likable team at this point you know what do we want to see the Chiefs do it fucking three years in a row I wouldn't have had them winning either I think the Rams would have beaten them but I digress I mean Joe Burrow what more can you say everybody is pretty much on the same page. He's fucking cool. He says cool shit. He has no nerves. He just carries himself like a fucking gangster, plays like a gangster, and they won that goddamn game. 21-3 to didn't look great. It was like, holy shit, are they just going to pour it on? But I felt it the whole time. I was like, there's no way the Bengals are going to get blown out. It just doesn't seem, doesn't seem like something that they would even allow. You know, and then boom, that long screen pass touchdown had no business being a touchdown, terrible tackling. Then the Chiefs go right down the field again. It's like, fuck, is this really going to happen? And then they blow it. They blow it. Now, am I one of those guys like should kick the field goal they lost in overtime? So obviously that means that they would have had more points it's like well it changes everything for what every team's gonna you know it changes the whole butterfly effect thing so i don't know necessarily that mattered but it mattered for momentum because then they came out stopped them right away got the ball back and i think that they didn't score then anyway but either way uh it just kind of swung the whole momentum and the d stepped up they shut the fucking chiefs down the chiefs thought that they had everything in the first and then all the things that were there were no longer there and they kind of didn't know what to do they didn't adjust or couldn't i don't know it seemed like they were running the ball at will they were going like six to nine yards a carry every goddamn time but yet again they just abandon it andy reed staple just don't run it when you should so i don't know what that's about but thankfully, <laughs> he fucked that up. And uh, they're they're going to make it. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. It's Nobody really saw it coming. I mean, I did say on here a couple weeks ago, like, I would not at all be surprised just based on the talent that they have and Joe Burrow. Like, his, pers- his persona. Not that it's persona, it's real. But you know what I mean, like... Not only the talent, but the charisma of that guy to be like, dude, like we're we're not underdogs. Like we're in this. I'm the fucking man, <laughs> you know. And he's right. So, I don't know. I'm excited. I think I got him. How can you go? They're team of destiny at this point. They for for a minute they weren't even gonna make the playoffs. They like totally blew their shot, and then they came back. It's one of those stories, and the defense is totally underrated because of all the weapons they have on offense. And, like, if you were a dumb motherfucker who said they should have drafted Panay Sewell, it's like, well, clearly you don't know what you're talking about. I mean, come on. I do really like the college teammate thing. I think that that's a real thing. Because the hardest thing about being a rookie is, like, getting your footing, you got to have a guy. You know, who's your guy? Well, how about the guy you've already played fucking a year or two with building chemistry, you know, it just checks out. And those two, especially, I mean, he's fucking slinging it nine yards per attempt. It's outrageous. Not yesterday though. Obviously it was very low. It it looked bad for a while. No sacks though. That offensive line went from one of the worst games ever to 
you know, their game plan at least switched it up so that wouldn't happen again. I think that they kind of knew, like, hey, we if we get sacked nine times by the Chiefs, like, this game's over. So we kind of have to be on our best behavior for this one. Uh, but, man, when it came down to the end, I was like, fuck, they battled all the way back just for this to happen. You know, they only had two timeouts. The Chiefs get that first and goal, and it's like, well, they're just going to run down a minute 20 and then just score a touchdown because they're the Chiefs, and they, they just can, and they will. And then he gets sacked? Was it back-to-back sacks? Was that then? I don't remember. But either way, just unbelievable turn of events. They go to OT. They lose the coin toss. Chiefs get it back. They shut them down again. Just absolutely perfect. And then the Bengals roll down the field like some fucking gangsters. Good shit, man. And here's the thing. Like, look, Buffalo, you give up a score with 13 seconds, and then you get ran down on the whole possession. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, win the game in regulation. And if you don't, then whatever happens in overtime, you know, that was your fault for not winning it. They still, you know, I I do hate the thing of like, oh, well, you should have stopped them. It's like, yeah, no shit. That's literally the whole point of the game. So, like, that's a dumb reason to not want to change the overtime rule if that's all your argument is. Like, well, you should just get a three and out and get the ball back. It's like, well, if you did that on every possession, you'd really win the game. You know, like, that's just silly. But, I mean, you know, you got to do something. And if you can't do something, you shouldn't have won. So, I mean, that that's pretty much that. Uh, and Mahomes just didn't seem like he knew what to do. He was just fucking heaving it. That interception, I mean, it was a terrible play. He threw it right into double coverage. There was no chance. There was no chance. And both guys with their feet, they're just unbelievable. I mean, Mahomes doing like a triple spin. It's like, how does this even work? This shouldn't be possible. Like his level of awareness. Anybody else tries this, they turn right into a guy. How does he always manage to know the exact spin or cut or whatever thing to make to where he's running completely uncovered? Like, I don't know. I get it, though. You can't avoid to have a spy on Mahomes because then you have, uh, you know, less of a guy in coverage. Maybe if you drop eight and one spy, so you're really dropping seven, maybe that's the key thing. But clearly, whatever they did worked. So I guess we'll leave that up to the football guys. Uh, (laughs) But just what a game. I was on the edge of my seat. It was absolutely thrilling. I'm very excited for the Bengals. I really want them to win. It would be nice on the other side for Stafford to get one too because, like, that's sick. But they could just win it next year (laughs) or whenever. That team is stacked as fuck. Uh, But I guess so is the Bengals. But I, I don't know. I'm just rooting for Joe Burrow. What a guy to step up right as Brady retires. I guess let me touch on that before I do the Rams game totally forgot the best to ever do it the best to ever do anything maybe could we say that has anybody ever been better at what they do than tom brady at football i mean the level of success is pretty outstanding fdr maybe you could argue you know i don't know There's a lot of detractors out there, especially in the Jewish community. I don't blame you. (laughs) Um, Holy shit, though. I mean, here's the thing. People are like, can you believe it? Can you believe it? He he could go another year. It's like, yeah, he could, but for what? You know? He's basically said it. He's like, dude, if I'm not winning the Super Bowl, I don't don't want to. (laughs) Like, yeah, I could go put up more gaudy stats and add to the crazy numbers already. But what, what, for what? There's nothing to prove. If you retire with all the records, you know, then that's it. You don't need to pad stats. The Bucks aren't going to win the Super Bowl next year. You know, this they could have gone back to back, but injuries just hampered them. I don't think the Antonio Brown thing would have mattered as much with Chris Godwin. You know, they could have done it without him because I think the added chemistry of the extra year and just, you know, they had that game almost too they they would have played in the title game 
you don't think that they could have beat the 49ers? I mean, like, come on. It's totally fathomable they'd be right back in, you know, if they don't let Cooper Cup just run right down the field. Whole nother situation could be happening. He'd be playing in another one. Um... But, you know, I, I don't think he should switch to another team either. Like, let it be the Pats and the Bucks. Let him be the one guy who, at the end of his career, went to another team and crushed. Like, that's the thing. Nobody else has done that. Jordan on the Wizards. Um, who, Like, Namath went to another team. Nobody talks about that. Fucking go, all, go back to the same era. Fucking what's his name on the Colts? Johnny U, your boy. He changed teams after the Colts. I mean, like, everybody, Rivers went to the Colts <laughs> from the Chargers. Um, just Manning went to the Broncos. I guess you could say that was a success because he put up all those records. Uh, and then they won the Super Bowl, but it was the worst year of his career by far. So that's, like, more of a toss-up, I would say. Um, and that was also just that was also more complicated. He was coming off the surgery. They didn't want to bring him back, blah, 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 blah. That, there's more to that story. But you get what I'm saying, like, the one guy to just be like, all right, I'm going to try something new out. And then just instantly goes and wins the bowl. Like it just unprecedented at every level across the board. All the numbers, none of them make sense. The playoff stats, the guy played, you know, three seasons of playoff games. He played like 50 playoff games. It's insane. Uh, 10. So you look at the Super Bowl stats. They could easily be a full season's worth. Like, his stats just in Super Bowl games are comparable to, like, his 2003 numbers or whatever. Like, it's just unbelievable. Um, There's nothing more you can say. He's been my favorite player ever since I was fucking six years old, five years old, when however old I was when the Rams' first Super Bowl was. Um, Patriots-Rams, that is. Not the Rams' very first one. Um, And, you know, love the guy ever since. I guess... I lucked out in that way because everybody else was just mad that the Patriots were always winning, like how I would feel if the Chiefs were always winning. Like, although they're fun to watch, too, I I did not want them to be back in the Super Bowl. So I kind of get all that. Um, But just what a pleasure. And if he came back, great. You know, he'd have another great year. And, you know, who they're never you never out of it with Tom Brady. I'll tell you that. But they wouldn't be a favorite or anything. Um, And it's weird the the. People who like thrive on ESPN just saying outlandish takes like when they were saying that the Chargers and the Raiders should take a knee for 60 minutes and over time. How, how does nobody have the take that, oh, Brady's retiring, Aaron Rodgers wants to go to a new team, why doesn't he just go to the Bucks and they can just be like a plug-in team for guys who want to win the Super Bowl? I get it, maybe you wouldn't want to follow him up, but that doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, I, again, I don't think it's a realistic scenario, but if you want to be the guy who has the cool take, like let Rogers to the bucks, they bring every single person back again, obviously, except Brady and probably Gronk boom, or let a bunch of people, maybe not a bunch, let a few solid key people go. Devonte Adams, also a free agent, bring Adams and Rogers down to Tampa, run it back, you know? Just a fun little take you guys are missing out. How am I the only guy who's on top of this? Jesus. <laughs> um, Rams, 49ers. Another close one, which I didn't expect. Matt Stafford. Matthew, I'm sorry. Uh, he, I just get flashbacks. I've watched a lot of Lions games over the years due to being in Chicago, a lot of NFC North games, uh, the Lions are on TV sometimes, even when they're not playing the Bears, and you don't know why, because there's so many other games on, but I'm stuck watching the fucking Detroit Lions. Uh, every now and then, like, the throw to Jaquiski Tart, well, <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be to him. Well, it was, clearly. There was nobody else around, but that pass that should have been intercepted, I was like, oh, that's Matthew Stafford. <laughs> so like the thing he's he's played exactly the same with the Rams. They just have an immense amount more talent. So as everybody expected, if he has more talent around him, would they be a lot better? Yes. But he's still doing Detroit Lions, Matthew Stafford stuff where it's just like, what was he even doing on that play? 
He's just heaving it directly downfield at a corner. Neither of his receivers that were downfield were near that ball. And she's like, oh, that's such a Matthew Stafford moment. And it's like, can you win the Super Bowl if he does plays like that? Because if somebody, you know, all it takes is the guy to catch that ball, and that game's potentially over. Um, which I was sweating because I had big money come in if I won that. <laughs> I also uh, balls eat it out, parlayed Bengals, Rams. So, you know, I, I knew. I knew. When it gets to the playoffs, see, I knew that I would be doing a lot better. Divisional round and on is when it gets a lot easier to bet. <laughs> it only takes 19, 20 weeks, but by then, phew, you boys got it down to a science. Uh, I mean, the, the Rams fucking shut down the 49ers offense. Jimmy G, I, I get it. Is he a top five quarterback? No, but it's like... Everybody always talks, oh, you should get an upgrade, you should do this, you should do that. Well, it's like, where are all these upgrades that are just, like, sitting on fucking trees? The Rams getting Stafford is such a rare thing that would happen. Nobody's trading their quarterback. You know, like, oh, it's that easy. Just go get an upgrade. Oh, sure. Didn't think of that. It's just like, what a brilliant concept. Same thing like I was talking about. Oh, just just get a stop? Oh, genius. You really nailed it. Uh, and I even saw things that were like, they invested all this into Trey Lance. Now they're starting Jimmy G. It's like, why would you even do this? Like, why isn't he the guy? It's like, don't you think that they know if Trey Lance should be playing or not at this point? Like, clearly he's not ready. And they wouldn't be winning. Like, they're winning. What's the problem? It's just such a weird thing. This guy just gets all this hate because everybody just decided it. You know, they, they didn't have it. They didn't make enough plays. What can you do? And he missed that pass early to Kittle over the middle, which is amazing to say every time. Uh, and shit like that will kill you. But, I mean, everybody misses throws at some point. Like, Brady misses deep balls, too. It's not. And even when the guy's wide open, it just happens. You don't hit every single thing. Uh now, I'm sure the people who break down every single play could get into why exactly he's, like, not super great, but some guys, they just have a look. Like, when you see it, like, oh, he looks like he knows how to play. He's one of those guys. It doesn't look like a disaster when he's back there. And then some of the throws are fucking rough, but some of the throws are fucking magic, too. Like, the guy's got an arm, you know? Leave Jimmy G alone. He's from Arlington Heights. <laughs> uh, but I, I mean, I don't know. Would they, they, they'll be better with somebody else, sure. Like if you can get somebody better, if Trey Lance ends up being better, you'll always be better with somebody who's better. Like <laughs> it's not rocket science. Um, I don't know. I mean, you shut down the run game, you take down Debo. What's supposed to happen? I, honestly, they should have won by more. It's a testament to the 49ers' D. They're very good. Um, as far as the Super Bowl goes, I'm taking the Bengals. I'm going to take them. Uh, but, I mean, you know, Aaron Donald versus that terrible Bengals O-line scares me. Other than that, though, every other matchup is solid, but that's a pretty rough matchup to get over. Um. I'm not worried about anybody's secondary against the Bengals. They've been doing fine the whole time. Like, maybe Ramsey will shut down one guy. But that's the thing I also want to add. Everybody wants to act like, oh, the Chiefs, they have all these weapons. The Bengals, they're not nowhere near ready. It's like, look at their offense, though. Mixon, a top six running back in the NFL. Chase is a star already. And he makes T. Higgins that much better. Like, T. Higgins is your number two. That guy's a giant. He was just monstering balls out of the air from the sky like and Boyd is in there Uzama hopefully he's not hurt but like you know what I mean like they're stacked as fuck just as much as anybody the line's just their weakness and that defense is better than anybody ever could have anticipated so I don't know suffice to say but I'm going I'm going Bengals but you know if Aaron Donald is a monster game, that could that could be enough just f to swing it. But I think Stafford will probably throw some stupid ass pick, maybe two. You know, 
and we'll see what happens. You know, maybe that little white dork will drop a wide open touchdown again. That was so funny. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Cooper Cup will probably tear them apart. I don't know how anyone can ever do anything to slow that guy down. We'll see. I'm fucking excited. Can't wait. Super Bowl, best day of the year every year. Can't wait to hit up D'Amato's for a massive pizza, maybe some Sammy's, maybe some desserts. We're going big yet again. Maybe get a couple counter countertop t- kegs. Jesus, that was hard to say. Countertop kegs. Nailed it that time. <laughs> uh, and I think we'll get out of here on that. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Appreciate you. Rate, review, and subscribe. Again, all the goods are linked in the description below. But remember, I are fat. You are fat. We are fat. Calculator!